The Rebbe starts off the Sikha by saying that the month of Elul, as we know, connects the previous year and the coming year. And this is why in the Avoida of Chodesh Elul, we have two parts, it's a twofold Avoida. On the one hand, there's a Cheshben Tzedek, a full proper calculation for the actions of the previous year, to do tshuva for anything negative that was done in the previous year, and through that correcting, fixing up the previous year. Number two, it's a preparation for the coming year by taking good resolutions, good hachlotes, and so on, and in that way ensuring Says the Rebbe, since the names of the months, Nisan, Iyar, etc., are names that Torah uses these names. In fact, some of them, including Elul, are even called in this way in Torah Shabiksav. It's understood that these names will bring out, will explain to us the inner meaning of what the month is all about. And so to in our case that the month of Elul hints, the name of the word Elul hints to these two avoides that we just mentioned of the Chodesh Elul. Again, for the uh, fixing up the previous year and the preparation for the next year. Says the Rebbe, this is why we find that amongst all the different remozim, the different hints that we have regarding the word Elul, we also find that the word Elul can be divided into two parts, as we'll see a little bit later in the Sicha. And these two parts of the word Elul would fit with these two avoides that we just mentioned. So the Rebbe is now going to bring two different remozim about the word Elul, one from the Tzemach Tzedek and one from the Rebbe's father. So the Tzemach Tzedek explains that the word Elul is comprised of two words. We have the Aleph Lamed and then Vav Lamed. So Aleph Lamed is the other way around, would be Lamed Aleph, so it's Loi with a Aleph. And then the second Vav Lamed is, again, it's a Lamed and a Vav, it's Loi with a Vav. So it's the same word twice, but one is Loi with an Aleph, which means not, and one is Loi, which means to him, Loi with a Vav. In the spiritual realm, Loi with an Aleph represents the Darga called Keser, which is that element that's completely higher than Ishtashlos, than the normal, regular um worlds, the chain of event of the worlds and of events of the worlds, in other words, the the, the Olamois, and Loi with a Vav represents the six Midois known as Zo, as the Eir Anpin, which is already known as what's called Seder Ishtalshalus, part of the regular worlds. And the Rebbe continues quoting from the Tzemach Tzedek, from other places, it's also explained this idea, that this, that this idea of the Loi with an Aleph, the Aleph represents that which is Keser, higher than Ishtalshalus, and Loi with a Vav is the level of Ishtalshalus. One of the places we see this is in regards to a Pasuk, a Pasuk in Yeshaya, where it says, Bechol Tzarosam, in all of the troubles, distresses of the Yidin, then it says, Loi Tzor. What does the word Loi mean over here? So the word Loi over there actually says, with a Aleph, Loi Tzor, as if he's not distressed, over the problems and the things going on down here. But the way we read it, the way we explain it, the way we understand it is loy with a vav. That he is distressed and it does matter to him what happens down here. So Chassidus explains that the word loy with an aleph, when we say loy tsar, that's coming in, 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 in connection to the level of keser, which is higher than ishtalshalus. In the level of keser, that's higher than ishtalshalus. So everything going on down here is like completely insignificant. And that's why the expression is, In other words, at that level, it really all doesn't impact. But when we say, That's from the perspective of, or more specifically, again, the level of Zoz, the Eiramp and the six Midois within the world of Atsilus. And as far as this level is concerned, all the things going on down here in this world, in the avoid of the Tachtoinim, definitely do matter and to, do take up space. So again, loy with an Aleph would mean the level of Keser that's higher than Ishtalshalus. Loy with a Vav would be the level of the Midois, which is the level of Seder Ishtalshalus. What would all of this have to do with Chodesh Elul? Loy with an Aleph and loy with a Vav is that in Chodesh Elul, what's shining is Yud Gimel Midei Sarach and Hashem's 13 attributes of mercy, which are higher than Ishtal That's like the Loi with the Aleph. But on the other hand, this tremendous light 
of Yud Gimel Midis Harachem is in a way that it comes down, it's drawn down within Ishtalshlus and a Pnimi is the Kawai in an internal way, and that's what's represented that there's also the Loi with a Vav, meaning that it's coming down within Seyder Ishtalshlus. That's the Tzemach Tzedek ex- explanation. Now the Rebbe moves on to the explanation of the Rebbe's father, Rebbe Levi Yitzchak. And this is what he says. He also puts Elul into two groups. And he says like this. In the word Elul, we first of all have the letters Aleph and Vav, which is of course the word Oi. So you have Aleph and then a Lamed, and then the Vav and then a Lamed. So you have Oi, and then you have the two Lameds. What does this represent? So the word Oi, the Zoyar tells us, corresponds to the sphere of Malchus. That's what the let, that's what the Aleph and the Vav are. So and and the two le- within the Oi itself, these two letters Aleph and Vav, each one explains that Rebbe's father is representing a different element, a different aspect of Malchus. The main aspects of what Malchus is all about. We know that every one of the spheroids is also comprised of all the other spheroids. So therefore, the Aleph of the word Oi represents which aspect of Malchus? It's called Keser of Malchus, the highest level of Malchus. And the Vav of the word Oi, the Vav aspect of Malchus, corresponds to Das of Malchus. A little bit later in the Sikha, we'll see the significance of what, why specifically Keser and Das. But moving on in the meantime, what are the two Lamids? Each one of these two letters, Aleph is followed by a Lamid, and Vav is followed by a Lamid. What does that represent, says the Rebbe's father? We know that the Mishnah says that Hamalchus, kingship, is acquired with 30 miles, through 30 special attributes. So therefore, since there is this idea that Malchus is acquired with 30 attributes, Lamed is 30. In other words, there's the special Hamshacha, special things that are gained from above in order to, that Malchus should be able to be proper. You need to have these 30 qualities. And both aspects of Malchus, that is both the Aleph aspect, which is the Keser aspect of Malchus, as well as the Das aspect of Malchus, each one need to gain these full 30 qualities. That's why we have a Lamed both after the Aleph of the Oi, as well as after the Vav of the word Oi. Says the Rebbe, the connection of all of this to Chodesh Elul is that the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash in the month of Av what it mainly affected, the Churban, mainly affected this sphere of Malchus. Malchus is sort of what became impacted, broken, if you want, from, because of the Churban. So in the days of Yemei Ratzon of Chodesh Elul, which comes right after Chodesh Av, this is when Malchus is starting to be rebuilt. So that's why Malchus, the Aleph and the Vav of Malchus, are gaining these 30, the two Lamets, to rebuild Malchus the way it's supposed to be. Says the Rebbe, What's the connection between these two explanations, that of the Tzemach Tzedek and that of the Rebbe's father? And the Rebbe says, it's not only that according to both Pirushim, we have that the Aleph of Elul represents Keser, which is higher than Ishtal Shalos, Because remember, the Tzemach Tzedek said, Loi, with an Aleph, the Aleph represents Keser. According to the Rebbe's father, the Rebbe says the Aleph of the word Oi, within Elul, is the, the Keser of Malchus. So all of that is higher than Ishtar In both cases, according to both Pirushim, the Vav represents as it's coming already down, more bepnimius, more internal into Ishtar Again, according to the Tzemach Tzedek, we said it would be mainly referring to the six Midois. That's called Zo. Or according to the Rebbe's father, that Vav represented the Das of Malchus. Now Das, Kabbalah so this explains that the level of Das is like the key to all six Midois. So it's again already bringing down more into a Pneumius, more into Ishtar Shalos. Says the Rebbe, it's not only that, that according to both Pirushim, Aleph is higher than Ishtar Shalos, and Vav is coming down, but also in regards to the words Loi, with an Aleph and Loi with a Vav, of how the Tzemach Tzedek explained it, and we'll see how that all fits in with the beer of the Rebbe's father as well. How does this work? The reason why we say that the two main aspects of Malchus we mentioned before is Keser and Malchus. Sorry, Keser and Das. Keser of Malchus and Das of Malchus. So the Rebbe's father explains that the first thing you need in regards to kingship 
is the idea of the tainug, the enjoyment and the desire to be king. That's what keser malchus means. It's known in chassidus that keser is in, in the person's faculties, that's the idea of enjoyment, pleasure, willpower. So for number one, for malchus is the idea of keser. The king has to be interested in, and have the pleasure in being a melech. So that's what keser malchus is. The other extremely important thing within Malchus is since we know ein melech bloyam, there's no king without a nation, so the king has to lower himself down to get involved with, to pay attention, to really act close to the people, having that special close connection, and that's really what Das is all about. Das is, is that closer connection that the king is now having with the people, and that's Das of Malchus. What is the difference between these two levels? of the tainug of, of, of to be able to rule, and the level of das. So the difference, again, is going to be this idea. As far as the tainug and rotsin to, 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 be, to be king, the king is still completely removed from the people. What's mainly felt over here is only his own level of being exalted, of being higher, etc. It's mainly about his tainug, and therefore... The am, um, the people, are not really toifus makam. They're not really taking up so much space. They're not really so significant. But as far as the level of das of malchus, that means the level where the king is actually coming down, paying attention, becoming connected to the people, actually ruling the people through his laws, etc. Here we could say the people definitely are significant. It very much matters how they're behaving, their conduct, and so on. Says the Rebbe, now we could see how all these Pirushim all flow together. The connection between the Rebbe's father's Pirush and the Pirush of the Tzemach Tzedek. The Tzemach Tzedek said that Elul is these two dargis of Loi with an Aleph and Loi with a Vav. Which we explained as meaning Loi with an Aleph is a level that's higher than Ishtashlus, where the actions of the, down here in this world don't really, so to speak, impact as much. Loi with a Vav, according to the Tzemach Tzedek, was the level of the Midois, where the actions of the world do impact. So therefore, says the Rebbe, connecting to the Pidush of the Rebbe's father, in the level of Keser Malchus, again, this is the level that we said, that's the enjoyment to the king's pleasure and will to be a king. This is the level where we say that what happens down here doesn't really take up so much space. It doesn't really matter what the situation of the Am is at, as much. And therefore, that fits with the Pirush of the Tzemach Tzedek of Bechol Tzorosim Loitzor with an Aleph because the Maisa Tachtoinim, the actions down here, don't impact there as much. On the other hand, the level of Das of Malchus, which is the lower level, which is what the Rebbe's father speaks about, this is going to be connected to the Pirush of the Tzemach Tzedek of Bechol Tzorosim Loitzor, where things do matter because this is already the connection between the king and the people where their actions, of course, do have a very, very big impact. So the Rebbe is now going to explain how these two different levels, again, that which is removed from Ishtal Shlos, where the Maisat Achtoinim don't impact as much, and the level that's coming down more relatable to the people, where the things that the people do do have an impact, the Rebbe is going to explain how this is all connected with the avoid of Chodesh Elul. So the Rebbe says, in connection to these two aspects that we just explained within Elul, these two dargois, this is also why we have the two avoidists in Chodesh Elul, fixing the previous year and the preparation for the coming year. So first the Rebbe discusses the preparation for the coming year. The main avoid of Rosh Hashanah is to achieve the Tamlichuni Aleichem, that Hashem should become king over us. We're crowning Hashem as king. We're trying to arouse within Hashem what's called the Hisnasus Atzmas, that essential level of that's completely really exalted and removed from the world, that level that the world has, doesn't take up any space at all, where anything we do doesn't really affect anything. This is why we say on Rosh Hashanah, by Tkiyah Shoifer, we say, Yivchar Lanu Esnak Loseinu, Hashem should choose our portion. Because this level of Tamlichuni that Hashem is becoming king over the Yidden is not really coming so much because of our avoid in specific areas of Torah and mitzvahs. It's really coming because of Hashem's free choice that Hashem wants the Yidden. The Shamas Yisrael are so deeply rooted, Kvayachl, embedded with an Atzmos even higher than, Torah, than the root of Torah and mitzvahs. And this is why Hashem says, I can't even change them for another nation. Despite their current situation of Torah, avoid of Torah and mitzvahs. And what really brings this mainly about, 
This is when a Yid arouses inside of himself that deepest level of his bitul that comes from the etzim of his neshama. So that's the avoider associated with Rosh Hashanah bringing out that deep bitul from the etzim of neshama. But the correction for the previous year, that element of Chodesh Elul, is mainly, as we said before, through a Chesh bin Tzedek for the avoider within Torah and Mitzvahs, how in fact we went along in carrying out the laws of the king, and in this situation, this is definitely connected with that aspect of Malchus, how the king is very much brought down, connected, connecting with the people. So therefore, again, we have within our Avoida these two ideas, the element of Elul, which is relating to Hashem, the way Hashem is completely removed from the Oil of Mois, and then there's the element of Elul, which is the tshuva for the past year, of how Hashem is connected to our Avoida and our Torah and Mitzvahs. Now, says the Rebbe, since in the word Elul, this is both ideas are, bringing, are within one word, so it's understood that these two aspects of Elul, the loy with an Aleph, which is higher than Ishtal Shalos, the loy with a Vav, which is already brought down, to have Shaykhs to the Elul are not two separate things, but rather to use the words of the Tzemach Tzedek, that in Elul, there's the connection, there's the joining of the loy with the Vav and the loy with the Aleph. And the Rebbe is going to explain this in two different ways. One thing the Rebbe says is, as far as when we speak about the Cheshbon Tzedek for the previous year, which is the Loi with a Vav aspect of El, in other words, the way the Ebishter is more connected down to our Torah and Mitzvahs and our Avoida, which we said is going to be more about our Tshuva for the things that we possibly didn't do in the right way and we need to fix them up. So that's Loi with a Vav. But at the same time, where is the Slicha and Kapara for all of this coming from? It's coming from the Yud Gimel Midis Harachim, which are higher than Ishtar Shalos, and that's the Loi with an Aleph aspect of Elul, specifically because this is an area which can be blemished and impacted by our actions. That's why the Kapara and Tikkun, for all sorts of sins and Chesroinus of our Avoida in the area of Torah and Mitzvahs, could be fixed up because it's coming from a level that's beyond it all. That's one way of looking at it. So too, when we speak about the avoid of Tamlichuni Aleichem, which as we said before, we're crowning the Ebishter as Melech, which is more the idea that, he, that everything down here is not Teufus Makam, is not really so relevant and, and impacting everything. But nevertheless, it's also connected with the loy with the Vav Ha'ar, because the whole idea of the Tamlichuni Aleichem, the whole point of crowning the Ebishter as Melech, is so that, event, that it of course comes down also into the avoid of Torah and Mitzvahs, that we do properly all the laws, all the mitzvahs of the king, which is the loy with the vav. And of course, through all of this, we cause the yivchar lanu that Hashem does choose us on Rosh Hashanah, but not in a way that it remains loy with an aleph completely higher than ishtal shalos, but that it's revealed down here, loy with the vav, in practically in our world, with aksiva vachsima toiva, lashana toiva masukah for every single yid, echad v'achas mi Yisrael, b'toiva nirva nigla, l'mata me'asara tvachim.